Hold on, hold on. Before you watch the rest of the video, I have a new site on Tippy where you can see lots of unseen videos and more. Link in the description. Don't miss out. Join the team and enjoy the video. ...to be more efficient within the problem understanding stage and the data governing stage. As we see here, the biggest problems within the field of data science to become then also into a deployment stage. And what data science basically is, is generating insights from the massive data that is produced by machines, by digital products that we all use all the time. And for that you use statistics or you also use non-probabilistic um, approaches such as, yeah, everybody knows them probably, neural networks as the big buzzwords um, from the past years in data science. Right? Oh. I'm Al Padulo, I'm uh, the Global Marketing Director and for production and marketing for uh, 360 Today News. And basically is the idea of, especially for 360 Today News, finding out what our viewers want to know about, what is exciting them, what is bringing them in, and translating that information. Right now, I think basically you know, the way that I look at it is that VR is kind of in an evolutionary state. And I think at this point, we've gone past the crawling point, the crawling stage, and we're now kind of, we're, with VR, we're kind of a toddler. You know, we're not very sure on our feet, we're kind of moving along slowly, and we haven't reached the point where we can integrate data science into the mix yet. Could you share your thoughts on that? Sure. It, you know, I've been around in, the, in, in VR now for about eight years, and it was very interesting. I'm very lucky to be able to do a lot of interviews with a lot of different people around the world. And I was at a place in a small little office in Santa Monica with a company called Emblematic VR. And they're doing some very interesting things with VR. And the lady who runs it, Noni de la Pena, is kind of known as the godmother of VR. She did one of the first award-winning film festival um, uh, environments where you were experiencing what it was like to be a prisoner in Guantanamo. And she presentations. Lauren, could you share your thoughts on this kind of movement into becoming interactive and how you think data science plays a pivotal role in that? Yes, definitely. I mean, first of all, the potential of virtual reality is basically that um, we see something with all of our senses to our brain is like super super fast like one megabyte per second so forget about fucking 5g you have like 6g in your brain so currently we just use from that like 0.1 percent <laughs> um, you know and black and white printed that is how we consume information and how it works kind of that we can summarize it in virtual reality and Another point why we need to understand what for kind of person is using virtual reality is that right now we're using a mobile phone, it's already part of our body, right? Mm. But technology gets much, much closer to the body. So the next stage will be VR, the next stage will be a contact lens, the next stage will be a chip in your brain. And as closer we come to the body, as much more we need to understand the customer and the consumer who is actually using it and how it should be, for example, the content be presented. And there you can use a lot of already established data science processes that you have like in customer segmentation. Rubber duck antenna sticking out the top and I had it on my hip like a giant, you know, tortoise shell on the side of me. Now, you know, we have this small little things that we carry around with us and as you were saying before, you know, next thing is going to be, eventually it's going to be a chip in your brain. Uh, it's all moving along and we're going to look back on it and say, wow, that was a great advancement. But as we're living it right now, it doesn't seem like a fast advancement. It seems like it's going at a snail's pace. I really liked your analogy with it being a human, the sort of metaphor of it growing from a baby, biblical cord, growing to a toddler. Just wait for the teenage years, it'll be terrible. Yeah. Rebellion, what's going to happen there? <laughs> in and you could actually climb out and they had the separate seat with a massager and they had a tea making service and all of this so that the, the driver isn't really driving anymore if the truck is doing it all. You can actually get out of the seat and move. 
I don't think I'd want to see that on the road right now, but that's kind of like, that's where we're going. And yeah. but, but you don't want to see it on the roads right now? I'd be a little scared of it right yeah, now, yeah, especially exactly. in Bangkok. <laughs> but I mean, exactly <laughs> that scary feel, uh, feeling, right, probably leads also to the fact that not everybody has right now a virtual reality system at home, right? But in five years, I would probably not even blink at seeing it on the road. It's, that's what I, yeah, I agree, totally. And that's where we're at. I mean, where I wanted to, to head over is actually the adoption, you know? So everybody, the customer himself, governments, industries, and so on, during the 90s to the US, I remember my father using a kind of a virtual reality in, a, you know, in such a play, play hall. So, and now it's like 30 years later and virtual reality is still not reality. No, and it's done. And, and, but what we're seeing now is we're seeing devices that are easier for people to get at their hands on. And for instance, what Max just experienced when we were downstairs uh, in the speaker room getting ready, and he put on the Oculus Quest, and he had what I call the aha moment. When he put on the headset and all of a sudden he went, oh my God, this is amazing. This is wild! Oh my God! That's and true. It's, it's the aha <laughs> they did. We had to actually, actually, Florian was like about to tackle him and grab the headset off of him because we needed to get ready for this panel. But it was, and it's what I see all the time, and I love seeing it. I, you know, I've gotten to see. We've got the Oculus Rift downstairs, and we're doing something simple, playing Beat Saber. And there's a few people in the audience here who really had a great time playing it, and they all of a sudden now are saying, "Wow." This is really cool. I can see where this can fit into my life as exercise, as entertainment. And then from there, we go on to how does it really apply to education, to helping your thought process, to integrating into society. So they say for you to, to bring it into a new product successfully, it's got to be 10x. And whilst that experience was absolutely amazing, it was so cool. I would say it's on the border, it's like 8, 9, 9x. The, so what was amazing, I, I put this, these goggles on and what I hadn't experienced before what was the next level here was I could put a little radius around me and choose the space that I wanted to be in and I knew it was completely safe. So they put all these different obstacles I could play with in this space and I knew that no matter what I did, I, I was safe. And if I, whenever I stepped out of this environment, I would in 3D be able to see everything around me. So that was, it has cameras built in, so you're actually seeing the real world. So from the last experience I had, I didn't feel safe. I, I fell off my bed when I was trying to fly across some island. Um, and this time I felt really safe, so that's definitely an improvement. Um, and I think the thing that will make it 10x is, is this interactive. Because that, that's when it will s splitter into so many different realms. It will be involved in storytelling for education. Um, it will be... In, involved with gaming, but in a much more interactive, fun way, gaming will be changed completely. Um, it will. I mean, it, we can have virtual office rooms, and that's that's sort of penetrating the market in a completely different way. Um, now, there are efforts to to show people this product and try and get it out there. Like you have these sort of experience centers where you can see things, and that's great. But I, I, I do think it's going to require that next step to to, to get everyone on. I just want to bring it back to you, Florian, because you were talking about the infrastructure behind autonomous vehicles and you're saying the difficulties with deployment. Where do you, could you sort of just describe that a little bit more to, to the people here, the infrastructure that's required to, say, change this virtual reality to an interactive platform and how difficult you think that is and how long you think that would take? Huh. Okay. That sounds like a really tricky question. Okay. Uh, give me a, give me a try. Uh, I mean, on a technical, on a technical perspective, I actually don't see a big problem. Mm, so on a really technical perspective, since I mean, actually, a virtual reality is in the newest one, the the Quest, right? Oculus Quest, um, has already. You, is actually using autonomous driving technology, right, with a leader sensor and so on. Yes. So they already get all those environmental data and so on into the system. Um, from a technical perspective, I mean, the risk is lesser than having an autonomous driving car because yeah. you are in a virtual reality. You know? So technical-wise, I guess it is already now possible. 
Okay. The, the problem that we really face is, is more to rethink also, look, when you work in a digital office, what do you have in your mind? Describe to me when you say digital office. I mean, you mean like, yeah. the I mean, office I have in Berlin with my computers and my colleagues next to me. Exactly. So, so I mean, a new picture of a digital office and virtual yeah. reality right. is probably just a 3D built office, maybe with a several more displays, you yeah. know, yeah. and that it is. My, but my, you know, the usability in virtual reality might be a totally different one. And my, then, my view or sort of hope of it is perhaps full high expectation, but it's, it's the flexibility of having that office experience that you have like in the real world, you have your colleagues there next to you, you can speak to them, they're in the same room as yourself.